explosion worship. And for the ones that are staying here, sing us out. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. 
I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold you with my victorious right hand. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray to him. Descend upon us now, O Spirit of the living God. The words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, may be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. In 1983, President Ronald Reagan passed a bill into law for our nation to recognize a private citizen with a national holiday. It was a controversial move at the time. It was so controversial that it didn't take effect until 1986. In 1985, in June, I was appointed to my first church, actually two churches. And then in January of that year, we had the very first Martin Luther King Jr. celebration. And the Sunday before that, I spoke in church about how wonderful it was to have a day that celebrated the life and the ministry of a pastor. I remember taking a youth group to the Dr. King Center for Nonviolent Change in Atlanta, Georgia. And when, we, when you walk into that building, Encased in glass is Dr. King's pulpit robe, like I wear at 11 o'clock. And the youth on the group said, what's this? And I said, well, it's his preaching gown. They said, he was a preacher? I said, they didn't teach you that in school? They said, no. They taught us that he was a radical mover of people. They never mentioned the word preacher. I said, oh. But on that Sunday at the church, I talked about how great it was to have a day to remember someone who had made us confront our own racism. Because everyone in this room is racist. Everybody is racist. Now, there are different degrees of racism, but everybody has to come to grips. And until we as a people can admit that we are racist, we will always be racist. And we are living in a world of white privilege. And if you don't think that you're privileged, I'll have a conversation with you over coffee and let you know about your privilege. Because sitting down and having a cup of coffee is privilege. We are privileged as a people. And I talked about this in that sermon. And as the people left that church that morning, as people always do, they went out the door and they said, oh, that was a great sermon, preacher. I said, thank you. Patted myself on the back. Thought it was great. The next year, 1987, about a week before I got ready to preach that Sunday before Dr. King Day, I got a phone call from a lady in the church. She said, are you going to talk about Dr. King this year? I said, why? She said, well, if you are, nobody's coming. We took a vote. We're not coming to hear about him at all. I said, ah, I did that last year. I probably won't talk about him at all this year. She said, good, we'll see you Sunday. I said, all right, I'm off the phone. I was so lividly mad. And I sat for a while in my chair in my office wondering what to do. And I reached over on my bookshelf and there found a book called Strength to Love. It's a collection of sermons from the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that he preached at his church in Alabama. And I took one of those sermons, and this is the only time I've ever plagiarized a whole sermon. I read it word for word that next Sunday. Exactly as it appeared in the book that he wrote. I just photocopied it out. Still had the page numbers on it. To this day, they still say that was my best sermon ever. <laughs> to this day, they don't know that I preached from that book. And that they heard the words of Dr. King themselves. To this day, they thought I was that gifted in grace to use big words like he did. But the book Strength to Love talks about having the strength to love. 
in the midst of anger and violence, in the midst of people who hate you just because you are there to have the strength to love them. And I will tell you, that's the hardest thing to do in the world today, to love people who are different than you. It is the absolute hardest thing to love people that you disagree with. And tomorrow, we stand for that as a people. Not as we only remember Dr. King, but as we remember the sermons that he proclaimed based in the gospel of Jesus Christ in proclaiming unconditional love for all people. That's what he stood for. That's what he was about. That's what tomorrow is about. Is loving all people. And I tell you, it's hard in our world today because the issue of racism has grown again. In our society, people are more vocally racist than at many times in our history. And it doesn't seem like since 1960s till today that we've made a lot of progress in that area. And we need to be in prayer about it. And we need to learn to love people regardless of the color of their skin, of their race, their creed, their nationality of birth. But we need to look at people as people. When Pastor Jay Song was appointed to this church as a pastor a few years ago, families left the church. Because they didn't want to listen to him because they said, you just can't understand him. But I think the roots were deeper than just a lack of understanding. It's hard in the world today. I know it's hard. Tomorrow there's going to be a rally in Richmond. Those that stand for the Second Amendment are going to go and protest. They have that right. That's a great thing, yes. And there's going to be people there who are going to stand against them. Because they think that having guns is not a great thing. And my prayer is that both sides have the strength to love one another and to listen to one another and to be concerned for one another. It's kind of like in our society today. Do y'all notice that there's an election and there's some people that are Democrats and there's some people that are Republicans and it's gotten to the point where you really just can't go on Facebook anymore. Because the sheer anger and stuff that is said about one group or another. There are people that are saying things about Democrats that are so vile, and it hurts, because my dad was a staunch Democrat. He was a Democrat his whole life, voted Democratic in every election. And every time I read one of those posts that says, those Democrats are awful people, I think these people never met my dad. But the same is true because there's people who say Republicans are all the problem of the world. My mom was a staunch Republican and voted Republican in every election that was held. My mom and dad always went to cancel each other out because they didn't want one or the other to win. But every time somebody says bad about Republicans, they're talking about my mama and nobody talks about my mama that way. It's just not right. We need to learn to love one another. Republicans and Democrats alike need to be able to sit down in a room and share with one another in conversations that lead to solutions to problems instead of pointing fingers across aisles that are imaginarily drawn that separate and divide us. We need to have the strength to love one another. The United Methodist Church is not doing any better. This May, the General Conference will meet, and just this month, the protocol of grace and reconciliation for separation was introduced because of the issue of LGBTQ persons has brought us to the point where it looks like the church is going to split one side or the other. And this is one of five proposals that's going to General Conference 
about this issue. And it will be hotly debated. But my prayer is, is that whatever they decide, that it will help us learn to love all people. And when I say all people, I mean all people. Because that's what we're called to do. We need to have the strength to love. We need to have the strength to love people no matter what their lifestyle, no matter what their choices are, no matter where they come from, no matter which side of the tracks they're born on, which color their skin is, which God they choose to worship, which person they choose to love, we need to love all people. And that takes courage and it takes strength to love. Love is not something for mamby-pamby, wishy-washy people. Love is hard and it takes sacrifice and it takes love and compassion for all people. Tomorrow we'll gather some people in homes or on streets or wherever. We'll remember Dr. King. He had a dream that he proclaimed from the steps of the Lincoln Memorial one year. It said that he hoped we would get to a day where people are judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. And I hope that one day we'll get there, but we're not there yet. He taught us that hate can never drive out hate. Only love can drive out hate. And to have the courage to be people of love takes a lot, I know. Because in the world today, people want you to pick a side. They want you to say, this is the right, that's the wrong, and this is it, and this is it. And those people, them, they, if you've ever used any of those words, it shows that you have hate in your heart. And you cannot claim the name of Jesus with hate in your heart. You must drive out the hate, and it takes strength to do that in your own life, and it takes strength to do that in our society, in our state, in our nation, in our world. It takes strength and courage and faith in God to drive out hate. We must be strong in love. So I don't know what you're going to do tomorrow. Many of you will have a day off. Church offices are closed. Don't come back. It's a preacher holiday, I'm telling you. The only one named after a preacher. But I hope that it's not a day that you just lay at home with your feet up. But go and make a difference. Do something that changes the world. Tomorrow at some point, I'm going to walk across the bridge downtown. Take my grandkids to see the statue of Dr. King. They won't understand why. They're seven, six years old. But maybe one day they'll remember. Gramps took across the bridge to see Dr. King. Maybe they'll grow up in a different world. Maybe they can leave for their grandkids a better world than I have. But let me tell you this. I've read the protocol of grace and reconciliation through separation. And I, I have things about it that concern me and things that I think are all right. But I will proclaim before you this. I was raised Methodist. In 1968, I was confirmed as a United Methodist. In 1988, I was ordained as a United Methodist, and I will retire United Methodist. And I will live out my time as a United Methodist because I believe that's what God called me to do. And I don't know what the future of our church is, but I hope that we have the strength to tell people everything that we are called to love one another in the grace that God showed us in and through the life, the death, the resurrection of his Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Good morning, friends. The, uh, over the past several months, your prayer ministry team has compiled prayer requests from Thrasher's adults and adolescents and children. And based on those themes and requests, which are, which are found in your bulletin inserts, and in collaboration with a local Emmy Award-winning photojournalist, by the name of Trevor Fair. A short video was made for our church. We're gonna show that to you now.
pray who are and who were in the hospital. Uh, Marley Davis, uh, Chick Graves, and Kenny Brooks. Uh, let's keep them in our prayers as well. Dear God, we pray you today in this kind of season, in this kind of moment, in this kind of time, there's nothing that we can do but pray you. Hear us this morning. We ask your help, as we ask your protection, your guidance, your power, your wisdom. Lord, but first of all, we want to give you thanks for sending us, your Son, Jesus Christ, as the light of the world, so we could receive salvation, we could be saved. So thank you so much. And let us also be the light of the world and the salt of the world. Let us continue to face the world. Let us continue to fight against evil. With your power, with your wisdom, with the faith that you give us. Because we confess that we cannot do with our own strength, with our own knowledge. That's why we are asking your help in this morning. Yes, Lord, there are natural diseases in the world. There is so much conflict, so many issues that give us anger. Lord, there's nothing that we can do but just pray you. Because we cannot control that, but only you can control. So we pray that you change the world with your way, in your time, but through each and every one of us. So use us as you have planned and as you have planned every one of us in your plan. And Lord, let us have courage and 
let us have faith to march and to continue our journey in this world as your sons and daughters proclaiming the word and sharing your love with others as we love each other and support each other and forgive each other. So Lord, we ask you to control this world and also we give you our control of our lives. Let our ego die and Jesus govern our lives. So Lord, hear us this morning. We ask your help. We ask your pray, prayer. We ask your over protection over our lives and your guidance in our faith journey. We ask your power, we ask your wisdom, and give us that faith to bravely live in this world representing you and representing your kingdom. So Lord, we, we pray you this morning. We worship you. We thank you. We praise you. Pray in your holy, precious name. Amen. At this moment, let us continue to pray the Lord's Prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass us against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever. Amen. At this moment, as the ashes come, let us offer God.
D.C. and went to see the Lincoln Memorial, and I went to the gift shop, and I bought a picture of Dr. King. It was drawn in his memory, and it hangs in my office. I don't want you to think I'm crazy, but I talked to Dr. King often. This week, we've had several long conversations. As I know, when I say something that's going to be one of those things that people might get upset about, I'll look over and say, Martin, here we go again. He'll remind me to take strength to love. The invitation for you today is to find the strength to love people. People different than you are, people other than you are, people that you don't even like being in the same room with. Find, and I know some people it is hard to love. Find your strength to love. That's your invitation today. And if today is the day that you want to become part of this United Methodist Church, by the profession of your faith in Jesus Christ and by saying that you'll support the church with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness, then come and we're going to stay in the 1960s. It's been a great 60s day. It's good. It's, uh, we're going we're gonna to sing together our song, Put a Little Love in Your Heart. Let's stand and sing together.